One of the biggest indicators of success is how fast can you learn a new skill? Because from the moment we're a kid, basically we need to be able to learn new skills as quickly as possible in order to survive and you know do well in this world. I mean, whether that's business, networking, or even just basic stuff like you know how to uh, work out or how to grow muscle or whatever it is. We need to learn how to learn, basically. It's called meta-learning. And the chances are you've probably never heard of meta-learning because we're often taught things in school and university, but we're never taught how to actually learn new things effectively. So this is an interesting video. I think you should stick around with this because, you know, learning how to learn properly is really going to benefit you with literally anything because if you know how to learn better, you can learn new skills faster. It's sort of self-explanatory, but yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel because I do post weekly biohacking and motivational and personal development videos. So they say it takes 10,000 hours to learn a new skill. Well, that is true in terms of mastering the new skill, but in terms of just becoming much better than most people at that skill, you don't need anywhere near 10,000 hours. You need more like 200 hours to become much better than the average person. But it's actually a lot easier than that just after 20 hours of focused practice on something, on a learning a new thing, you become much, much better than at least 60 or 70% of people in the world at that thing. So that's quite encouraging, you know, if you just commit to doing 20 hours, which is not really much at all, you could just do an hour a day for 20 days, not even one month, and then by the end of that, you're gonna be much better at that thing than most people in the world. So without further delay, basically, I'm gonna explain a handful of ways you can learn things faster. So number one, you need to set really specific goals. If you don't have any goals for you know how good you want to be at a certain thing, what you want to be able to do with it, then you're gonna have a very hard time defining when you've actually done it. So an example of this is, let's say if you want to be able to do a handstand, you know, like a, a planche leading up into a handstand, you want to be able to do that gymnastic movement. Well, if you don't set that as the goal, then you'll never know when you've achieve that goal. You might just have a goal of becoming more flexible. Well, how do you define what's more, what more flexible is? You need to actually know what you're trying to achieve. Let's say if your goal is to become good at guitar, instead of just saying, I want to become good at guitar, a much better goal would be to say, I want to be able to play this particular song at the right speed, for example. That would be a really specific, um, actionable goal. So you need to set really good goals. Number two, you need to break down whatever skill you're trying to learn into really, really tiny parts. Now don't get too granular with this, but you need to break it down into small enough parts that you can, you can basically do that. You can master that one part in a day. So if you break it down into just really, really small things, instead of trying to learn an entire song on guitar, your first step on the first day might be to learn how to hold the guitar. And then the next day you might learn, you know, how to, position your hands or you know one chord for example and you need to break it down into such small chunks that it's almost guaranteed that you'll be able to achieve that one step towards the goal if it's too big of a goal then you're going to become overwhelmed it's going to feel like it's miles away number three is to use the what's called the Pareto principle this is the idea that 80% of the results come from 20% of the work so you need to try and identify as quickly as possible what basically what what small amount of action is going to give you the biggest results so using the guitar playing as an example the biggest reward for action that you can do on guitar is strengthening your fingers because your fingers are the only way you can play guitar so if you have weak fingers which obviously most beginners do then you won't be able to learn any of the other techniques because your hand is too tired so in that case the most effective thing to do is to strengthen your hand and strengthen your fingers. So identify with whatever you're trying to learn the most important and the highest reward thing you can learn first. Number four, if you're trying to learn a new skill, you really need to remove all distractions from the place where you're trying to learn the skill. Like say if you're trying to learn, I don't know, how to paint something, how to draw, you need to remove all distractions. You need to turn off your social media, put your phone face down or even out of the room. Uh, you know, and get into an environment where you're not going to be distracted. If you're if you're just trying to learn a new skill, but you've also got 10,000 other things going on, you've got 50 tabs open in your browser, you've got messages flying in from Facebook and from your WhatsApp, you're going to have a very hard time concentrating and you're definitely not going to be productive. And then it's going to feel like it's taken you a long time just to reach that particular goal. Whereas if you just actually focused your practice, so the only thing you're doing for that one hour 
is practicing the skill you're trying to learn, then you're, you're going to be 10,000 times more productive because you don't have all these other things going on that are going to distract you. Most people, what they do, they'll try and learn a new skill, right? Let's say if it's learning a language, they'll try and learn a language. And so what they'll do is they'll practice, they'll set aside an hour a day to learn the language, but during that hour, they'll be checking their phone. So maybe a third of the time, they're checking their phone for messages. And then another 10% of the time, maybe they're, you know, uh, scrolling through social media or whatever it is. But then it's very rare that people will set aside one hour to practice something and only practice that thing for that one hour. So try and be a bit disciplined with it. Number five, it's been said that it takes at least a year to master something. I would say it actually takes more like six months if you're practicing for about an hour a day. So commit to doing six months. Now, I know that sounds like a long time, but especially if you've broken it down into small steps, like I said before, it shouldn't feel that overwhelming because you can do those small steps quite easily. It might just be like uh, you're going to practice for one hour a day and you're going to do that for six months. Most people have or could make an hour a day spare. So, but if you can't do that, try and commit to doing six months, but doing 10 minutes a day. Everyone has 10 minutes a day. So try and commit to a certain time frame before, because otherwise what will happen is you'll, you'll get like one month in of doing it an hour a day or doing it 10 minutes a day. And you'll feel like, oh, well, I'm not making any progress. It's hard and you'll give up. Whereas if you've already committed to doing six months, then, well, you're going to, you're going to actually see some results and it's going to be worth it. Yeah. Commit to a certain time frame. I would advise six months. You're trying to learn a new skill and you've probably heard it being said that you're born with talent talent you get naturally. If you don't, if you're not born with talent, then you won't ever get talent. That's not entirely true because really talent, all talent really is, is that you find it easy to do a certain thing. You do a certain thing quite well, whether that's playing a sport or, you know, drawing or whatever. And yeah, while it's true that certain people have, you know, they find it easier to do certain things, you know, like some people are better at hand-eye coordination. Some people are better at maths and logic. Yeah, that is true to some degree, but you can learn almost anything. So the brain, and this has been proven with a, a theory called neuroplasticity, which means that the neural circuits and pathways in your brain are not permanent. They can be changed very easily. Well, not very easily, I should say, but they can be changed over time. And so if you, if you want to learn something, but you're not talented at it, don't let that put you off because you can, you can literally learn anything. Like if I wanted to become a good painter, and I painted for three hours a day every day for a year, I would be a really good painter. But because I'm, I don't want to do that, I'm not doing that. So, but that doesn't mean I'm not talented at painting. It just means that because I haven't practiced it, I'm not good at it. So basically, in a nutshell, the longer you practice something for, the better you'll become at it. I know you, it sounds like something you should already know, but so many people give up because they think they're not talented or they're not naturally gifted at the thing. But that's kind of a myth. Number seven, just make sure you, uh, you actually believe in yourself because a lot of people, when they start doing something new, you're going to have that learning curve at the beginning, especially if it's a difficult skill, you're going to find it hard to learn. So at the beginning, you're going to be battling with yourself and your inner thoughts will tell you things as soon as it gets difficult. Your inner thoughts will tell you, why are you doing this? You know, you shouldn't be doing this. You don't know how to paint or you don't know how to play guitar or whatever skill you're trying to learn. But you really need to believe in yourself and believe that if you commit to doing a certain time, a certain amount of practice, you, you will get better. It's just, it's like a, a law of nature, I guess you could say. You will get better if you practice the thing more. Number eight, there are lots of different things you could learn in this life. You could spend 80 years just trying to become the best artist or just trying to become a good musician. And the truth is you're, you're never really going to perfect a skill because you can't perfect a skill. There's always different nuances and different ways you can do things. So don't aim for perfection. I know it sounds bad for you know, a personal development channel to say that, but you really want, what you want to do is aim for above average. And because you're aiming for above average, that becomes more achievable. That becomes realistic. And suddenly you'll find that you can, get, you can achieve that goal easier. And then by achieving that goal, you'll be more motivated to push for or you know, to push towards perfection. It's an effect called the winner effect. And it, basically it comes from this book, I'll try and link to it in the description. It comes from the idea that if you have a series of small wins, they will gradually build on each other and give you the strength and motivation to uh, reach the bigger goals. This is why it's so important to break down the skill you're trying to learn into small steps so that you can gradually become you know, better and more motivated to reach the more difficult goals. Number nine, before you 
before you jump into learning a new skill or you know trying to become good at something it's probably worth your time to just take a step back and do some research on how people can learn the thing or like what the best way of learning is because otherwise you're going to be wasting not wasting your time but you're going to be spending your time doing what might not be the most effective things you could be doing so for example let's say let's say if you want to learn jujitsu the martial art now if you knew nothing about martial arts you've never done them before you might assume that a good way of learning is to read a lot of books understand the theory you know maybe uh, watch some videos and while those are useful that is nothing compared to actually getting on the mat and having you know doing some, some sparring actually doing the thing um, and in the same way if you're trying to learn a language you might assume that you should be studying lists of grammar complex uh, you know rules and while that is important it's far more important to actually practice the language with a local to actually speak with a local as fast as possible and learn uh, vocab lists because when you're learning a language in particular the the biggest thing that's gonna that's gonna catch you out where you're actually using the language is not knowing the word for something it's not going to be that you can't remember the grammar rule for a particular cognate or something like that it's it's going to be something really basic like you don't know the word for horse or <laughs> i don't know why you need to know the word for horse but it's going to be something like that but you wouldn't know that unless you spent a bit of time researching how what is the best way to learn a language and then you would find out that from actual people who have you know who are bilingual or polyglots or something like that uh, they will tell you the most important thing is yeah to study the grammar at the beginning but as soon as you have a basic understanding of how you know pronunciation works and the alphabet and things um, really the most important thing is studying vocab lists and then as soon as you know enough vocab to have a basic conversation and to self-correct yourself, then you start speaking to locals and then it sort of snowballs from there and then you know, later on down the line you can learn grammar rules if you want to. But that's really not the most important thing. So in a nutshell, just spend some time researching what the best way of learning is. So I hope you enjoyed this. This was nine ways to learn something faster. I do actually have a blog post uh, with 40 ways to learn new skills faster. So you can check that out in the, in the description or just go to transcendyourlimits.com and you'll find other articles on personal development, biohacking and uh, things like that. Uh, make sure to subscribe and uh, I'll see you next time.